I'm Michael Dowse, Director of Publishing at, at Larian. So, Michael, talk about what it's new here with Divinity Original Sin 2, Deluxe Edition, oh sorry, Definitive Edition for Xbox One. Uh, the Definitive Edition is coming with um, a lot of tweaks and changes that we've um, deduced from looking at press and player feedback uh, over the course of the really successful PC campaign. Um, a lot of these changes for the console audience are focusing on quality of life. So uh, you probably play today um, the UI changes, uh, like the new journal, which gives you some more context to your journey and lets you kind of milestone out uh, exactly where you are in your adventure and what's going on and give context to the characters and the items that you've picked up along the way. What are some of the challenges when taking a game that is meant for PC and pointing it to the Xbox? Okay, that's an interesting question because this game is not meant for PC. So I don't know if you remember, but we, we launched very close to our original PC launch period. Um, it already had full gamepad uh, UI support. So you could play a PC in split screen uh, with your gamepad. So we never considered it a uh, PC game. But what we did do when we started thinking about the consoles is we put it in the hands of console players and we sort of analyzed and looked at the way they play it, the way that the things that they take for granted. You know, it's, it's a very in-depth RPG and even things like action points to, to some people were not fully apparent what that meant. Um, especially like picking up objects and moving them and, and being very creative with the way that you solve quests. It seemed like the PC crowd coming from, um, you know, old school RPGs like Ultima and even newer ones like Pillars or even Dragon Age Origins, for example. Um, these guys kind of knew how to play a hardcore um, RPG, but the, the guys on the consoles, uh, not all of them, but some of them in our playtest showed that they were struggling with some of the fundamentals of what, that, what makes that experience so um, in-depth. So we just looked at ways to onboard them better and tutorialize it better to make it clear. We haven't stripped anything out of the game, we haven't made it simpler in any way, but we've just kind of said to guys, um, you know, this is what an action point is, this is how you do turn-based combat, uh, and made it kind of easier for them to get into it. I remember in the first of Indie Original Sin for uh, Xbox, you had to make some changes because there was a, a difficulty spike that most players just couldn't get their head around. Okay, yeah, so difficulty spikes exist in every game, they exist in our game, a lot of the games, um, because it is a design-driven game, so our combat situations are handmade, they're hand-tailored to give very challenging experiences. So you can choose to play the game on the new story mode, which is a more narrative-focused mode, it's less hardcore, you can play on tactician mode or classic mode, um, but anything other than story and explorer mode is supposed to kind of kick your ass in combat, that's, that's the idea. Um, so we have these difficulty spikes still, but what we did was we looked at the metrics and the data that we collected when we, were, um, when we launched the PC version, we read the forum posts and we saw where people were getting stuck, and we fixed them. You know, this is, this is what this document is. It's where in the game do we have problems, um, and how do we fix those problems, and what assumptions did we make about player behavior when we first made the game that were wrong, based on what we know now about people, uh, how people play and, and, and what actions they take, and we ironed them all out. For the people who have an Xbox One X, can you talk about some of the features that they'll be able to see and uh, notice compared to the original Xbox One? Okay, so this this is we're still working on them, but essentially we're going to get the most out of the hardware that we can possibly do. And to do that, we're working with like partners like Nvidia and Microsoft directly to try and push it. Working on HDR, we're working on 4K. We can't promise uh, any of these features yet, but certainly you know I won't be happy unless we have them. And then so. The dev team will either hate me or they'll, they'll figure out a way to do it. My hope is that it's going to look um, great on, on, on any system, but we're going to have that 4K and we're going to have HDR for those players. I have an Xbox One X myself, and so I want to justify like why, uh, why I have this console. So any plans for Nintendo Switch? Huh, yes, there are plans for it, but that's as much as I'll say. <laughs> we have plans for a lot of things, um, but we're looking into everything. We want to get the game out you know, to as many players as we can, and so we're, we're looking at the options. Uh, Divinity uh, Original Sin 2, Definitive Edition. You don't even have to buy it right now on the Microsoft Store. You can download a free trial for three hours if you've heard about it, you want to give it a shot. Download it for free. If you want to buy it um, right now until August, you'll get the first uh, act, which is about 20 hours or 100 hours, depending on what kind of player you are. And then from August, you'll be able to play the whole game.